This tutorial will introduce blogs and identify how to critically evaluate them for use in academic research. A blog is a discussion or informational site published on the World Wide Web, which displays posts listed in reverse chronological order. Blogs can be the work of a single author or a small group. Good quality blogs are interactive, allowing visitors to leave comments and even message each other. This interactivity distinguishes blogs from other static websites. In this way, blogging is a form of social networking. Bloggers produce content to post on their blogs and also build social relations with their readers and other bloggers. Bloggers use blogs as personal online diaries or to provide commentary on a particular subject. Blogs also serve as a way to advertise an individual product or company in an online environment. Blogs offer authors the opportunity to broadcast their opinion to a wide audience. In this way, blogs function as online editorials. To evaluate blogs, start by using the same four criteria used in the process of evaluating websites authority, accuracy, currency, and objectivity. See the Evaluate Web Pages tutorial for more information. The nature of blogs requires you to use new criteria as well. These are language, appearance, usefulness, and influence. Consider these new questions when evaluating blogs for authority and accuracy. Consider these new questions when evaluating blogs for currency and objectivity. The next four slides will demonstrate how to evaluate blogs using the blog-specific criteria. Language. How sophisticated is the language and the spelling? Does the blog contain reasonable and rational language, a reserve tone, as well as explanations, definitions, clarifications? Appearance. Does the blog have a professional appearance? Does the blog use visual elements effectively? Usefulness. Is the blog useful for academic research? Are there reputable outside sources that can assert the usefulness of this blog? Influence. Is it easy to obtain information about the community to which this blog belongs? and the number of blogs that link to this blog. What is the influence of this blog on the debate about the topic? At one point in the story's lifetime did a post appear. Now we will explore the 538 blog, demonstrating how it contains the criteria that certify it as a reliable source for scholarly research. Appearance. At first glance, it appears quite professional. The links and graphics place it as an integral part of the New York Times election coverage included in the caucus blog and other current information on the politics page of the New York Times. Additionally, the blog features an effective balance of images and text, as well as a prominently placed search box which maximizes the usefulness of the blog. Currency. This is established immediately. The blog was viewed on November 7, 2012, the day after the presidential election. The current date is clearly stated and the first entry was posted the night before. Authority. In addition to having the authority of the New York Times established, each post is signed by an identifiable author, in this case Nate Silver, the blog's founder. By scrolling down, you reach the About the Blog section. Here you can learn more about the blog and its contributors. A direct email address for Nate Silver is also provided. You can view and search the archive, which goes back to 2008 when the blog first appeared. The glossary and methodology links provide further information about the blog and how it assesses polling data. The detailed description offered in the methodology demonstrates the objectivity of this blog. It becomes clear that this blog provides conclusions based upon a great deal of data without political bias. Finally, you can view the blog's Twitter feed, which demonstrates its influence and outreach to other social networking sites. This blog has a very active role on Twitter. The at 538 Twitter homepage states that it has approximately 440,000 followers as of December 5th, 2012. 
A search on ProQuest Central, one of Wolfgram Library's subscription databases, for Nate Silver results in 20 scholarly articles that include citations to his blog. Notice how this list features citations to four different posts, which cover a variety of topics. The fact that these scholarly authors use this blog to inform their scholarship attests to the usefulness and influence of 538.com. Viewing a blog post, the balanced and rational language becomes apparent. This professional language, devoid of emotion or hyperbole, is maintained in each post. Nate Silver ensures that he presents a highly accurate blog by providing links to reliable outside sources. Additionally, he often includes tables and graphs from other sources, such as this list of 12 outside polls conducted the day before the election. This type of outside data populates a majority of his posts. Influence is further demonstrated by the large number of comments that each blog post includes. Clearly, this proves that many people follow the blog and believe that it effectively contributes to the debate. In this post, published one week after the election, the blog continues to provide accurate analysis. Not only does the post include a graphic showing the Gallup poll discussed, the link takes readers directly to the full study upon which the poll is based. The fact that this blog has won numerous awards further attests to its usefulness and influence. Note that 538.com has won accolades and awards from its start in 2008 until the present. In conclusion, this evaluation has demonstrated that the 538.com blog is accurate, current, objective, and authoritative. In addition, it has demonstrated that it is useful and influential, presenting information with sophisticated language and a professional appearance. Therefore, 538.com has proven itself to be a reliable and unbiased source of information on the 2012 presidential election.